you're watching the free version of this tutorial. Upgrade to premium for all footage and project and exclusive content. In exercise 11, we're going to turn our attention to the lens module and some of the features in the Mocha lens module are not available unless you're working with Mocha Pro. So please refer to the Imagineer Systems website for comparison between the different versions of Mocha available. Let's come down to the lens module now. Now we have the things we've seen before for the input and the output, and we'll take a more in-depth look at this later in the exercise. Now, what the lens module does is it lets you calculate the lens distortion that you might be facing with particular lenses. This is going to be more notable when you're working with wide angle, short focal length lenses or fisheye lenses. And the typical thing for these lenses is to make straight lines appear curved, either with a barrel shaped distortion or a pincushion shaped distortion. And as we can see on this image, we're meant to have some nice straight lines along here and we have a distinct curve to them. Now, depending on your footage, this can be easier or more difficult to detect. We come to the end of this clip and look at the clouds over here. Well, it's actually quite tricky to see any sort of distortion that's going on because we don't have any straight lines to look at. Now, to help us identify and remove this distortion, one of the ways we can do it is to find any frame on our clip where we have a good number of straight lines. Here, or actually probably a bit here. Yeah, so frame six. We've got lots of straight lines in our image, and this should work out quite nicely. So let's come down to the parameters and we're going to click on locate lines and it's going to have a little look and a little think and try and identify any straight lines that it can find. And we can see all these in green. Now our job is to go in and actually start picking these lines out. I can do that by clicking on new line or hitting N on the keyboard and selecting the sections that make up my line. And when I'm done with this, don't just move on to the next section because what that does is just add this section to my original line and that's not going to work out very nicely. What I need to do instead is come down and create new line again and I can make my new line, which is why the keyboard shortcut of N for new is very handy. So I can just quickly go in, go N, boom, 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 N, boom, boom. What we want to do is we want to find a nice selection across the image, not only horizontally, but also vertically as well. So let's come in and we'll do that. Now, this is quite annoying because we don't have a lot of lines that go all the way through the image. We've got shorter lines here. And if I turn my minimum line length up to filter out some of the shorter lines, we can also see if we look at the ground plane, that the ground plane is not exactly straight. If we look at the front of this, this is moving up at one angle and then all of a sudden the angle of the hill gets steeper here and this second bit. So we couldn't choose this line all the way up to describe the lens distortion because it doesn't. This line here absolutely does, but including this line at the bottom will throw our results way off. So if I turn my minimum line length down once more, find that nice balance and carry on with my selection. If I do make a mistake and add in a section that shouldn't be on the line, I can just click on it again and remove it. Right, let's have a little look now and see what we've got. So if I turn my minimum line length up again, let's see what we've got covered. Okay, we've, we've got most of the area covered. We've got, we've got the stuff around the edges, which is where a lot of the distortion is going to be. We've got some good coverage there. We might be missing out a little bit at the bottom here. See what we've got. There we go. We can easily add one in there and one in over there and another one up there. But that's looking pretty good so far. Okay. So now we've got this work done. What we're going to do is we're going to choose the type of calibration. So we can do a one parameter calibration, which is usually a good starting point. But if that doesn't capture all of the distortion in the image, we can then move on to the two parameter. And this can be good when there's a regularity in the, in the lens. So if you've got a, an older lens or a cheaper lens where the optics aren't optimal, then you might find yourself getting a good result with two parameter. One parameter inverse is only used when we are working with RealViz RZ3 files. 
and we're not going to look at that anymore. We can also calibrate for anamorphic lenses, and we're going to come back to distortion map later on. But for now, we're going to start with one parameter. Are our lines equidistant? Are they the same distance apart? Well, no, they're not, and they probably won't be if we've used a natural image to create our lines. But for now, I'm going to leave us to one parameter and hit calibrate. It's gone off, calibrated, and we can see it's given me a little number here. But what's it actually done? Well, if I turn on my planar grid, you can see now, instead of being a straight grid, this is now distorting to show us the actual distortion that the lens is giving us. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to try and remember this, minus 12, 2, 4, 9. If I make that even bigger, you can see really what it's doing. It's helping to correct for pincushion or barrel distortion in the image. If I take it the other way, you can see what it will try to do. There. Boom. But we don't want that. Let's paste that calculated number back in. So I turn off my grid and I'm going to hit render. And now you can see the difference that's made. Let me come out of lens for a second and just into track so I can then go to the selected layer and the rendered undistorted layer. You can see it's straightening those lines out. It's at this stage, if you feel that your lines aren't straight enough, we can even dial in this number a bit more if you want to eyeball it. So if your eyes aren't agreeing with what has been calculated out, we can make manual changes there. And of course, we can choose whether we're going to undistort or distort again. And if we add distort, that's going to add our lens distortion back to the image. We would generally do this in a complete distort, undistort workflow. So you could render out an undistorted version, apply your effects, and then distort it at the end. But of course, that would render the data out twice. And there's other ways of using that lens data. But instead of rendering this, we can export the data out. And we can take this out to either Mocha Lens for After Effects. So we can use the free Mocha Lens plugin to deal with the distortion and undistortion. We can work with Imagineer Lens Data and save this out. And this is also useful if you want to create a database for your particular lenses as well. Calibrate all of the lenses once and then save those out. But we can also do that as a distortion map clip. And we can save the undistort or the distorted map. And then we just need to take it out to a directory in a 32-bit file format. So this would usually be TIFF or EXR. And once we've done that, we end up with files that look like this. And we can use these in applications that support UV or ST maps. For example, Nuke. Now remember when we had our calibration here and at the bottom we had distortion map. If we select this now, we can import our undistort and our distort maps and use those directly within Mocha. So this is a good way for, again, creating a library of distortion maps for your various lenses and then recycling those. Well, let's see how we can use this lens data in a um, in an actual workflow. Let's let's track something in. Um, we'll come in and where should we track? Let's track something up here. Track this bit around about here. Okay, cool. And we'll track in perspective. Not really, really worry too much about anything else, and we'll just track this forwards. And let's watch out for when it hits the edge. About to hit the edge there, and move off so what I'll do is just expand that out up but out a little bit now because all this stuff is coplanar what I'll do is I'll just move this up and around so let's let's see where it goes off screen to see how around about there okay Bring us up there. In fact, why don't I just take us to the end frame and push us down there? So keyframe the keyframe the shape before we even track that through. We've seen that before. That should work out nicely. Retrack all that. See what we get. Cool. Well, we haven't got the surface yet. The surface is moving consistently now, which is nice. And I'll quickly move the surface in there again. Uh, let's actually we better track those last few frames at the at the start. I haven't done that. Oops, and reposition our surface. 
Okay, let's check that through. That's looking fine. Can even insert a clip if we want to. Ooh la, lovely, right. Okay, so we've got our track now. Let's take out that tracking information. Take out tracking data. We'll take it out as an After Effects corner pin, so we'll do a quick insert in there. And because I want to also use the lens data, I'm gonna say remove lens distortion. And let's copy that to the clipboard. Now in After Effects, we've got to do things a little bit differently than we've done previously. To begin with, we can treat this like a regular corner pin. So if our corner pin isn't the same size as the comp we're gonna be putting it in, we want to pre-compose that and take a look at the earlier exercise about dealing with transform data if you need a refresher course on that. But this one is fine. So let's come in and go edit, paste, just to paste that corner pin data in. Now you'll notice that this doesn't absolutely fit where our corner pin was, which it did when we were working inside Mocha. Okay, let's fix that. Let's pre-compose this layer. So layer, pre-compose, or right click on it, and we want to move all the attributes into the new composition, and we can even adjust the duration, that's fine. And let's head back in to Mocha. And back in Mocha, we want to take out the lens data. So we'll come to our lens module, export lens data, and we'll take this out as Mocha Lens for After Effects. And we'll just copy that to the clipboard, exit our Mocha now. Now we have the lens data in the clipboard. We'll have our pre-comp selected. We'll go to Edit, Paste, and that will paste in our Mocha Lens data using the Mocha Lens plugin. And we can see it's done something. I'll turn that on and off. But it seems to have done something in the wrong direction. It's made the, uh, the distortion worse. And that's because the operation defaults to remove distortion. So we would use this on the original footage to remove distortion if we wanted to. In this case, we're actually wanting to apply the distortion so that it does the match move, matching the lens distortion on the original footage. So now we hit apply distortion and we'll let it play through and you can see that it's fitting in properly. But something else happens as the footage gets to the edge of the screen. Because we're applying this distortion data to it now, it's cutting off the edges of our pre-comp. So how do we fix that? Easy. Let's go into our pre-comp here and we'll just go to composition settings and we'll just make this bigger. So depending on how much distortion you have, you're gonna have to make this, you know, a fair, a fair whack bigger. So I'll bring that to 2250. That should be more than enough. And let's have a look at that back in the main composition. And those extra pixels were all it needed to calculate that in properly. So now I can add motion blur, turn my blend mode on to multiply and play that through again. And we now have our nice hole in the floor. So the important thing when using your tracking data and your lens module data is to remember when you take your track data out to turn on the remove lens distortion. And when you take your lens data out, is to apply it to a pre-composed version of that tracked data. So that After Effects can do the proper calculations when we apply the Mocha lens. And if we look at the result, we can see that stretching a bit more naturally in with the rest of the wide angle lens. One last thing I wanna show you before we move away. We didn't look at this equidistant line property. So let's come into a different Mocha project just so I can show you what that's doing. We would use equidistant lines when we're calculating our lens distortion using a grid. And if we want to, in the lens module, we can use a calibration clip to calibrate up our different lenses. So you can see the difference in the grid that the various lenses are using. So we have an 11 to 16 zoom lens set to 11. We have that same lens set to 16. And then we have an 85 mil lens here. So almost no distortion whatsoever. And I would highly recommend if you are working with a lens with a particular amount of distortion, that you do just take the 10 minutes out just to shoot some grid shots so you can more easily and more accurately calibrate the lens distortion. And that's our quick overview of the lens module.
In the next exercise, we're going to be looking at how we can turn 2D planar tracking data into a 3D camera solve. So I'll see you in exercise 12.